Hi, this is Renato Martinez. In this video, I'll show you how I've utilized B Productions realistic touch to add surface imperfections for that extra bit of realism in this scene. Things like dust, lunges, and many more. Let's go! This is how the scene initially looks like in Blender 4.0. I wouldn't walk you through the modeling process, but instead I'll focus on the surfacing aspect, which is the heart of the scene. For an overview, these are the main components. I have this terrarium thing which comprises of the base, the glass, and the glass is parent into the base, and the vegetation that I created with B Productions grass blade. I also have this table surface that these objects are on top of. For the glass object, it has a solidify modifier which adds thickness that I will utilize later as a material offset, like you see here. For the environment, I'm using one of my favorites, which is Polyhaven's Artist Workshop HDRI. Let's start by creating the base materials for the glass. We'll be naming these materials glass.outer and glass.inner. Let's select the glass.outer material and in the shader editor, make the diffuse color a pure white. Let's set the roughness to something low like 0 0.033 and then the transmission weight, let's set it to 1 to give it that full glass effect. Let's select the glass that inner material and let's leave the default material settings as is for now. To illustrate the effect of the solidifies material offset, let's change this material offset to 1. By default, it's set to 0, which is not doing any offset at all. And when we set it to 1, it's essentially telling Blender to select the second slot here. You'll see the effect that this has on our object. Glass on the outside and a diffuse material on the inside, but we don't actually want this. So let's select the glass inner material and make sure that it has relatively the same glass settings as with the glass outer material. So the base color should be set to pure white roughness to 0 0.033 and lastly the transmission weight set to 1 and so far this is how it looks like the base of the terrarium and the table surface have already been textured in substance painter but without the surface imperfections if we do a render now here's how the scene looks like not bad but we can make it even better this is where the fun begins Let's install Realistic Touch by going to the Preferences window or by pressing the hotkey Control comma. Go to the File Paths tab and under Asset Libraries, click the plus button. Let's browse to where we downloaded Realistic Touch and click on Add Asset Library. Let's close the Preferences window. For ease of access, let's split the 3D viewport and convert the other one to an Asset Browser window. On the drop-down menu, we should now see Realistic Touch as an entry. Let's select it and we should have everything ready. Let's start by adding some liquid stains on the inner glass material. This will make it appear like there had been some condensation build up inside the terrarium. Select the glass model and select the glass that inner material. To better visualize what's going on, let's isolate the glass object by pressing the numpad slash key to go to local view. In the asset browser window, let's select the stains liquid category and look for an appropriate surface imperfection. Stains Liquid 2 looks like a good candidate. Let's drag and drop this over to our shader editor. If you haven't already, make sure that you have Node Wrangler add-on enabled. It comes with Blender and is free. In the shader editor window, select the Stains Liquid 2 node group and press Ctrl T to add a texture setup. Let's delete the image texture node since we won't be needing it. Let's reconnect the vector sockets like so. To preview the surface imperfection better, press Ctrl Shift and then left click the node group. 
since we didn't have a proper UV setup for the glass object, the texture is stretched all over the place. But we don't want to spend so much time UV unwrapping, so a quick workaround to this is to utilize what's called a box projection method. Instead of using the UV as a vector input, let's use the generated input instead. Next, let's select the Stains Liquid 2 node group and press Tab to edit the group. In the image node settings under projection type, select box and adjust the blend value accordingly. For this one, a setting of one works great. So far so good. But I want to reduce the soft cloud noise and accentuate the stains more. To do this, let's reduce the 2 min value to something like negative 0.1 and reduce the contrast ever so slightly to something like negative 0.02. I also want the stains to appear a little bit larger, so I'll adjust the scale to 0.5. Let's connect the output of the Stains Liquid 2 node group to the main roughness input socket, and also to the Shins roughness input socket. Then let's crank up the Shins roughness all the way to 1. That's it for the inner part of the glass. Let's proceed to the outer glass. For the outer glass, we will be utilizing three surface imperfections and we'll combine them in interesting ways. First thing we want to do is to add some mild wiping residue. I've already pre-selected wiping residue 7 so let's drag this to our shader editor. And just like what we did on the inner glass material, let's set up the texture mapping and projection settings like so. To reduce the intensity of the brightest parts of the wiping residue, let's dial down the white value. Let's play around with the scale and location settings. And so far, this looks good to me. Next, we add the dirt. To combine the dirt and the wiping residue, let's add a mix color node. Attach the dirt node group on the bottom input socket. And the wiping residue node group on the top input socket. Let's change the blending mode to add so the dirt gets added on top of the wiping residue. To better see the effect that this has, let's crank up the factor to a value of 1. This looks good, however, we only want the dust particles to sit on the top part of the glass object. For this, we will utilize the object's geometry data to isolate the top part. Let's add a geometry input node. And let's add a separate color node. Connect the geometry node's normal output socket to the other node's color input socket. If we control shift left click on the separate color node repeatedly, we can preview what the individual red, green, and blue channel looks like. The blue output is what we want and we'll use this as a mask to isolate the dirt to only this white area. To do this, let's connect the blue output to the mixed nodes factor input. This is before, and this is after. Problem solved! Before we add the final layer of surface imperfection on the outer glass, let's make sure that the resulting output from the previous step is connected to the principal BSDF's roughness input sockets. And just like so, we now have this effect on the top part of the glass. As a final layer of imperfection, I've added in this 33 node group and adjusted the settings like so. I want this dirt to only appear on the bottom part of the glass. For this to work, we will be utilizing an empty object to affect the position of the dirt later on. In the 3D viewport window, press Shift-C to reset the cursor position to the origin. Let's add an empty object. This will come in handy later when we're isolating the surface imperfection. 
In the shader editor window, let's duplicate the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Instead of using the generated coordinate, let's use object coordinate instead. In the object field, let's click the eyedropper and select the empty that is in the 3D viewport window. Let's add a gradient texture and connect the vector sockets like so. Let's preview what we have so far. We can see that the orientation of the gradient is horizontal, but we want it to be vertical. To fix this, let's select the empty object and rotate it along the y-axis by 90 degrees. The gradient seemed to have disappeared though, but as soon as we move the empty object upwards, we'll notice the gradient behaving the way we want it to. Let's position the empty to somewhere here where we want the surface imperfection to appear later. The gradient effect is looking a bit dark, so let's fix this by adding a map range node. Set the 2 max value to something like 8. Now, in order for this mask to affect the dirt texture we have, we need to add a mix color node. Attach the inputs like so. Then, in the blending mode, select multiply, set the factor to 1, and now we get something like this. And finally, I add in a diffuse BSDF node and use the surface imperfection as a factor input, like so. We now have this final glass surface with these realistic surface imperfections. Beautiful. For the wood base, I've applied the same techniques as with the glass object but using the surface imperfection data as the bump node's height input, like you see here. The same procedures have also been applied on the table surface, utilizing a combination of different surface imperfections, in this case, liquid stains plus dirt. Thank you so much for hanging around and I hope you've had fun learning today. I can't wait to see what cool stuff you make with these techniques. See ya!